Morning all. I hope uh, the previous video it was clear that uh, that was just a made up game by Hans Mark. And I'm wondering now if I've just stumbled this morning on the actual game which maybe inspired um, Hans Mock. The annotations here are by Nimzovich, I, I believe they're in the public domain. Um, and I, on, a, on a serious note about overprotection, uh, so, some uh, sources like Wiki are saying it's, it's not that important. But actually, you know, against uh, the French defence, um, I have been using with great success. Um, this line in, in Blitz, I haven't um, tested it in, in much longer time controls, but um, establishing a pawn on e5, and then I've simply been playing this gambit, so knight f3, and after takes, I've just been playing bishop d3, and this, this is for real, I'm not, I'm not joking. I've been playing this with the idea of later a3, b4 to knock out, black's usually got a knight on c6, and play moves like queen e2 and bishop f4. And I actually officially like check this out on the Chess Games Opening Explorer. And it seems black does best um, to undermine quickly with f6. Otherwise, if bishop f4 to g3, uh, white gets this kind of bind on the position. And as far as overprotection is concerned, the e5 square seems uh, to be the most effective square if you are going to overprotect a point. Because um, I think there, there are particular vi reasons for this. If black's casting kingside, this this uh, spearhead stops usually a defensive knight on f6, gives white a bit more space, makes it difficult for black to break out later with f6. Because say you have overprotected with queen e2, rook, rook e1, and, and other stuff, then f6 is, might be exposing the e6 pawn after e takes. So you get this kind of bind, or if there's a bishop on g3 and a queen on c7, then f6 is going to be impossible. So the overprotection itself it exerts huge pressure behind the, the overprotection point. I think it's a, it's a real strategy to use, and I'm definitely using it myself. So this is a very easy opening to play against the French if you want to try it. Just the advanced variation with a difference. Instead of maintaining um, the pawn chain, you just gambit a pawn with knight f3 and simply play bishop d3. So it's a very easy idea of developing your pieces, just, just, just overprotecting e5. Okay, now this game, it, it just has to me a remarkable similarity. The opponent was Arthur Hackinson. It was played in Christian uh, stand, Christian stand 1922. So after e4, c5, queen g4, Nimzovic um, annotates uh, my innovation. Actually, let's, let's go even further back. Um, notice by Nimzovic, from a match, the first game in which appears my idea of a pawn sacrifice in the opening, not to obtain an attack, but merely with gain of a tempo, to overprotect a single strategical point with a view of cramping the enemy forces. Okay, so e, e6, d4, d5, so we have the advanced variation. And it should be noted also, but you know, before this, 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 this advanced French was a very, very popular uh, method against the French defence in, in the classical school. And they were always like trying to uh, maintain uh, their occupation of the centre by playing C3. Um, so this, this radical departure of, of different ways of handling the centre, like capturing away from the centre or, or, or this kind of stuff, um, is also, as, as far as the evolution of style is concerned, I, I like to think of it, of it as if there, there were generalizations set by previous generations, and the hypermodern school sought to, f to find, instead of generalizations which had already been made, they sought to find useful exceptions. And in a way, that kind of, for me, reminds me of, of some software projects where, for example, um, uh, electronic trade confirmation, where the, a lot of trades were done by the existing software, but then later you have to handle the exceptions. And in a way, the, the evolution of, of chess style is a bit like that. That, you know, we created the generalizations with, with Philidor about pawn chains, etc. And, and then later, um, you know, that was questioned, you know, by Morphy about the role of initiative attack open lines. And then later that, you know, Morphy's attacks were questioned, uh, you know, about the timing attack only when the equilibrium is, is uh, disturbed, you know, by Steinitz. And, and that was like refined and, 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 and concrete 
rules of thumb were created by Tarash, and then later the, the hypermoderns like Nimzovich and Retty were trying to find the useful exceptions again. So it's the, the generalizations are, are, are the prelude to finding the useful exceptions. And you know, that to me is like software, how software evolves. Um, also, you could call it one word, progress is another way. So anyway, so Queen G4, Nimzovich says, my innovation. After C takes D4, knight F3, so we, we start to get the overprotection of E5. And the Queen, like in, in the mock game actually, is, is coming to G3 actually to overprotect um, that E5 square. So after F5, Queen G3. And you see, in the mocking game it was on H2. Um, so castles, knight g6, so black's trying to sort of um, put pressure on, on e5, but now uh, Nimzovich is undermining these pieces, first this one and later this one, which, which are trying to you know, establish contact with e5. So there's this, this fight over e5, uh, but it's lost by black quite quickly here, after rook e1. Nimzovich writes, white's plan is now clear, he has given up a pawn, careless, when if ever he recovers it, provided his pawn uh, uh, e5 is maintained is an, instrument, is an instrument to cramp black's game there is there is um, no idea of attack in h4 it's object solely to pave the way for the removal of some of the pressure on the pawn on e5 the pawn sacrifice comes with the category of sacrifice for the sake of blockade I, I find it personally interesting that Nimzovich has called this a sacrifice for the block, blockade I, I would have thought it's like restraint because in a way you know black's restrained by this by this pawn on e5 and cramped. I mean, his earlier comments were talking about cramping as well, but um, you, you, you don't usually hear uh, cramping as a major uh, strategy uh, attributed uh, to Nimzovich. You usually like restrain, prophylaxis, blockade, not like cramping. But uh, it does seem to be an element of cramping in this game with, with this e5 pawn. Um, so Nimzovich writes here, bishop c5 was essential, <laughs> uh, which so to leave the f8 square free for the knight to retreat uh, after h5. Now a3, so we see on this side of the board as well, this, this knight starting to be attacked, and it's all about e5 again. If you can drive away both these knights, then the overprotection of e5 um, is, is going to happen. Now this game, as far as I'm aware, by the way, is, is joining. I hope it's not made up as well by, by Nimzovich. Um, so um, b4. Uh, White could, of course, have won the exchange here with h5. Uh, let's have a quick look at this. h5, knight e7, knight g5. So that eyeing that, um, that square there. Knight g5, rook e8. Knight f7, oh, so hitting uh, h8 and also this sensitive d6 square, which reminds me of a recent tactic for one of my games. <laughs> okay, so that would be forking um, the king and rook. Okay, once the rook moves, knight d6. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so um, after a3, black castled. b4 was played instead of uh, uh, not h5 and knight g5. So, um, Okay, what, what, what else did he say? Um, but with his undeveloped queenside and his unprotected pawn on h5, he would have had some difficulties to contend with. The text move is the logical continuation. So a6, rather better was uh, king b8, apparently. So king, king b8 uh, facilitates, I think, after c3, which is saying d takes c3, and then it, knight takes b4 would become possible. Queen takes c3. Uh, queen takes d3 here, so a peace sack there. Uh, bishop takes, and um, <clears throat> blimey, this is getting complicated. Off the, off the takes, uh, rook, rook e c1 check, b5, uh, queen takes b5, knight d4, and Nimzovich writes, with complications, which of course white uh, had he been so minded, he could have avoided some people playing bishop b2 on move 13. <laughs> so if we go back to move 13, um, there's there's like a bishop, uh, in, instead of here, bishop d2. <laughs> okay, because bishop d2 then might be b5. All right, so um, a6 was played. So this h5, so in a way it's carrying on the overprotection of e5 by, by making black get away from e5. So bishop d2 here, now a4. So again, this other knight's going to be driven away. <laughs> so uh, black gets in f4. 
Queen g4, and Nimzovich writes, the queen is well placed here. After knight b8, we see c3. See, the c files are uh, being torn open with the poor black king on c8. Uh, rook e8, his only move, Nimzovich writes. It will be noted that the overprotector, the rook on e1, now has the c file open for him without any trouble to himself. In order to avoid loss of material, black has to submit to curious regrouping of his forces. So uh, after c takes, black plays king d8, rook c1 chasing the queen. And now the queen gets imprisoned here, and chess games. That's why chess games quoted this. Uh, gave gave it the game title of the queen in prison. Because after a five, we have b six, and the queen stuck on a eight. And there's which writes, the queen finds herself in a position which, as a rule, she would only be consigned in a problem. <laughs> after rook c seven, black played knight f five. Now we see knight c three. Bishop b seven. And now, and now, nice little tactic. Knight takes d5, so undermining that f5. Knight takes d4. Knight takes d4. It's all over, really. And now there's a beautiful little finish by Nimzovich. I wonder if you can spot it if I give you 10 seconds starting from here. Okay. A little clue. Queen sack. Can I give you another 5 seconds? Okay, queen takes d7, forcing knight takes, and now, I hope you can see it, knight e6 mate, so a pretty little mate at the end. So, yes, uh, this this is another overprotection game. I do want to cover um, other aspects of my system, actually. I think it's, it's worth taking a pit stop to definitely look at my system, because as far as the evolution of style is concerned, I think it is highly influential, and um, apparently, you know, it, it, like... Uh, you know, the Russian school of chess was even influenced, like Petrosian, by some of the ideas. Um, and, uh, well, I, th I think a lot of players have been over the generations by, by, my, uh, by the ideas in my system. But overprotection is, is one of, perhaps, um, the, the least uh, sort of estimated as being powerful. But I, I think it's fairly powerful, especially against the French defence, this idea that you don't have to maintain um, your pawn chains, especially the E5 square in particular, as an overprotection point. It just, it just seems to have such a crippling effect on black's game, if you can overprotect that square. Um, please leave any comments or questions on YouTube, and please check out the roadmap link to the Evolution of Style, okay, which I'll put in the description of this video. Thanks very much.